Hello everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel, Living Hope Church Broadcast Media. I'm grateful to God that you are here, uh, that we can share the Word of God and learn together. This month, September 2021, I began a series on enjoying God's help through prayer. I want to share a few things with you about prayer and how you can enjoy God's help through prayer. This is the first installment and the title of today's installment is What is Prayer? What is Prayer? Let us pray. Father, we thank you and bless you for your gracious goodness towards us. We thank you that we have the opportunity to learn directly through your precious Holy Spirit about prayer. Please teach us, O oh God. Help us to follow what you teach us and to put it into practice. And remember, dearest Father, that your word says your word will never return to you void. It will accomplish the purpose for which you sent it. Therefore, Father, in your mercy, let there be accompanying signs even as we put your word into practice. Let your word not return to you void. Let it accomplish the purpose of God in our lives. Thank you, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is good. All the time is just so good. I am your host, Pastor Dr. Kemi Atandai Lori, the General Overseer of Living Hope Church. So what is prayer? Now, when we ask that question, there'll be a lot of answers. But let me begin by showing you the scripture that underpins the whole series in relation to enjoying God's help through prayer. You will find that scripture in Psalms 1 to 1, verses 1 to 8, but I will read verses 1 to 2 only on this broadcast. Psalms 1 to 1, verses 1 to 2. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. That is the underpinning scripture for the whole series on enjoying God's help through prayer. And this particular installment, this part one, this first part of the series, is looking at the question, what is prayer? When people try to answer that question, they answer it in a very traditional way. They will say that prayer is about asking God for things that we need or desire. That is the traditional answer to that question of what is prayer? But from the perspective of God, that kind of attitude reflects a very poor understanding of what prayer is. Actually, prayer isn't about asking God for the things we need or desire. Prayer is far, far beyond that. Let me show you five things that I think from scriptures and from what I've learned in my own experience completely define what prayer is for us. Okay? Firstly, prayer is about who we are. Prayer is about who we are, our unique personality, our focus in life, our nature, our individuality. That's what prayer is. Prayer is about who we are. It's about who you are. We see this in the prayer life of many people in the Bible. You try and get a list of people who prayed in the Bible. You'll find very many versions of how people prayed, when people prayed, why people prayed. But not only that, you will see that each person, actually, their prayer reflects who they are, their focus in life their unique personality, and their individuality. 
You see, for that reason, it's not really good to copy someone else's prayer or even to copy someone else's prayer life. You need to grow your own personality in your relationship with God. God is looking for a unique relationship with you, not a copycat relationship. You are a unique person. God has many unique things to do in your life. And so what we need to do is to see prayer as something reflecting who we are, our focus in life, our nature, our personality, our individuality, our level of maturity. So we all need to keep maturing individually because our prayer life at the end of the day is a reflection on who we are and what our journey with God looks like. So the first thing to say when people ask you what is prayer, the first thing to say is that prayer is about who you are. Okay, it's about who you are, who you are, your focus in life, your personality, your individuality. Then you move on from that to explain what prayer is. Secondly, prayer is about who God is to us. So firstly, it's about who we are. Secondly, it's about who God is to us. The nature and level of our relationship with God. That's prayer. The nature and level of our relationship with God. See, for instance, the story of Abraham and Abimelech, the king of Gerar, in Genesis chapter 20, verses 1 to 17. We find in that story that Abraham and Sarah, they moved to this kingdom called Gerar. The king of the kingdom is Abimelech. When Abraham and Sarah got to Gerar, Abraham requested Sarah to tell everyone that Sarah was his sister and not his wife. Abraham said this because he knew that in Gerar, because of the beauty of Sarah, that beauty will be reported to the king. And what the king would do would be to seize Sarah and have Abraham killed. So the king would appropriate Sarah as his possession, as his chattel. And to make sure that he doesn't have any claim from whoever was the husband of Sarah, he would kill that person who in this instance would be Abraham. So Abraham acted shrewdly by saying to Sarah, tell everybody you are my sister, not my wife. As Abraham had feared, when they got to Gerar, word came to the king's notice that a beautiful woman had entered the kingdom. And the king, Abimelech, requested the woman to be brought into his palace and he said publicly Sarah was now his latest wife and because Sarah said Abraham was his, was her brother Abimelech did not kill Abraham but you see God intervened before Abimelech could have sexual relationship with Sarah God intervened because God is a God of justice, a God of equity, a God of covenant. God has this wonderful covenant relationship with Abraham. God is Abraham's God. And Abraham is God's people. Amen. So God intervened and God went to Abimelech in a dream and warned him that uh, Abimelech had transgressed by taking the wife of a prophet. And this prophet was God's prophet, was God's own people. And God said to Abimelech, you must restore Sarah to Abraham. If you don't do so, you will die. Not only that, because of your action, by seizing Sarah and proclaiming Sarah to be your wife, uh, all the wombs of your wives have been shut up. So 
all the wives of Abimelech became barren because God intended to show Abimelech that Abraham was a person in covenant relationship with God. So Abimelech quickly restored Sarah to Abraham. And God said to Abimelech, unless Abraham prayed for you, uh, your wives would not be able to conceive again. They will remain barren. So Abraham prayed for Abimelech and his entire household, the royal household. And God listened to Abraham's prayer. So prayer is about who God is to us the nature and level of our relationship with God. So you can see in the particular story of Abraham and Abimelech, how God intervened because of the nature of the relationship of Abraham with God. That's prayer. Let's go on to another thing to help us about what prayer is. Prayer is about our relationship to others. How loving and caring we are and whether they are loving and caring to us as well. So prayer is about our relationship with other people as well. In fact, we will put it this way. Prayer is our relationship with the world, okay, with everyone else. How caring and loving we are and how caring and loving they are to us. For instance, see the story of Moses and Israel and God in Deuteronomy chapter 9, verses 12 to 29. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verses 12 to 29. In that story, we see that Moses had a very caring and loving relationship with the children of Israel. Moses loved them. Moses cared for them selflessly. And that's how God wants us to love. If we don't love that way, we don't love at all. You may think that we love, but actually all that goes for love might just be emotional attachment, a kind of selfish love rather than selfless love. But in this story and throughout the scriptures, we would notice that Moses loved the people of Israel, selflessly. And it's a reflection of how Moses actually loved God. Moses loved God exclusively. He loved God with his whole heart, his whole spirit, his whole energy, his whole life. And therefore, automatically, Moses loved Israel, the children of Israel, selflessly. The best way to show that we love God is whether we love people selflessly. In any case, in that story, the children of Israel, they didn't love Moses selflessly. In fact, they loved him selfishly. Every time that they had an opportunity to complain against him, they did so. On many occasions, they wanted to stone him to death. On many occasions, they wanted to replace him with a new leader who would uh, return them to Egypt where they had uh, been brought out by God. You know, God had set them free from slavery. But uh, every opportunity that they had to complain and to rebel against Moses and against God, they did so. They did so. And in this particular story, uh, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 9, verses 12 to, 20, verses 12 to 29, Moses was recalling some of the instances when these people behaved rebelliously against him and against God. And Moses spoke about how he prayed to God for them and how God answered them. Our prayers for other people will be important as much as our love for God is and our love for these people is. I really want to encourage us, love God and love people selflessly. It might be that they would not love you selflessly. It might be that they would love you selfishly or emotionally. They might complain against you. They might even want to get rid of you. But if you love God, 
with all your being and you love people selflessly, guess what? That is prayer. That's your prayer life. When you pray to God for people, God is more than willing to answer. Okay, so we are dealing with this important aspect in terms of prayer. What is prayer? So we've mentioned three things about prayer. Prayer is who we are, our unique personality, our individuality, our own nature, our own focus in life. Prayer is also who God is to us, our level and nature of relationship with God. And number three that we have touched on, prayer is about our relationship with other people, whether we are loving or caring towards them or whether they are loving or caring towards us. Let's go to the fourth example of what prayer is. Okay, the fourth example. If people, is, if people are asking us, what is prayer? Prayer is the joy of being in God. The joy of being loved and cared for by God. And the love and care that we receive from people. Both those who are close to us and those that we hardly know. This is the fourth definition of what prayer is. Prayer is actually the joy. Okay, the joy of being in God. The joy of knowing that we are loved and cared for by God. Prayer is about the love and care that we receive from other people. From those who are close to us and those that we hardly know. See, for instance, the parable that Jesus gave in Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. In that parable, the Lord Jesus showed us the example of an unjust judge. And there was a widow who was persistently coming to this cruel judge, this wicked judge. This judge that is unjust. So there was a widow who was persistently coming to this judge asking, give me justice. Give me justice from my oppressor. And initially, this unjust judge would not even brook the petition of this widow. But eventually, in that parable, he decided to listen to the petition and to grant the woman, the widow, the justice that she was asking for. So, this is how the Lord concludes that particular parable in Luke chapter 18, from verse 6 to 8. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, And shall God not avenge his own elect, who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Listen, if you know that you are loved and cared for by God, you will never give up on praying to him, no matter whatever the seemingly insurmountable obstacles that you are faced with. You will never give up on praying to him. You never give up on trusting him. No matter the outcome of your prayers to God, it's not about you in that sense. It's about you knowing that God loves you and cares for you and that in your relationship with him, God is more than willing to listen to your prayer. So prayer in this way is the joy, the joy of being in God, the joy of being loved and cared for by God, and the love and care we receive from people who are close to us and maybe those that we hardly know. Let me go on and show us a similar parable in Luke chapter 11, verses 5 to 8. The joy of being loved and cared for by God is illustrated 
in our relationship with him in prayer. Okay? Your relationship with God in prayer will show that you know you are loved and cared for by God. In this other parable, a friend comes midnight to ask his friend to let him have some loaves. And uh, the friend said, sorry, I can't give anything to you. I'm already in bed. My children are asleep. I can't give you anything. But the friend kept knocking and saying, please help me. Please help me. And eventually, the friend who was asleep, whose children were asleep, whose family were all asleep, got up in the middle of the night and decided to answer the petition of his friend who was at the door knocking. And the Lord Jesus says, if this person could rise up in the middle of the night to answer the petition of his friend, how much more God? Now, what we are saying is this. Prayer is you knowing that you have been loved and cared for by God. No matter how long it takes, no matter the seemingly insurmountable obstacles that you face, you will never give up on God. Because prayer is just you knowing that God loves you and cares for you. No matter how long it takes God to answer you, no matter the outcome, you will never give up on God. You will never give up on praying to God. Finally, prayer is the strength that we derive from fellowship with God as we trust and obey Him and the joy of fellowship with others as we relate to them based on the love of God in us. Okay? This is the fifth point that I want to make today. When somebody asks me, what is prayer? I know that the traditional answer they are expecting is that prayer is a pipeline to God's blessings. Prayer is what we use when we desire or want something from God. That is the usual traditional answer when somebody is saying what is prayer. But that kind of answer is not reflecting the perspective of God at all. Prayer is far, far beyond that. Okay? Far, far beyond that. So this fifth point concludes what is prayer for us today. Prayer is the strength that we derive from fellowship with God as we trust and obey Him and the joy of fellowship with others as we relate to them based on the love of God in us. Let me point us to an example in Scripture, to our Lord Jesus Himself in Luke chapter 10, verses 21 to 24. I will read those Scriptures for us. Luke chapter 10, verses 21 to 24. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, or He prayed, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent, and you have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills. To reveal him. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see, and have not seen it, and to hear what you hear, and have not heard it. It's important for us to underline that sentence. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit. Prayer is the strength we derive from fellowship with God 
as we trust and obey him and the joy of fellowship with others as we relate to them on the love of God, based on the love of God in us. As you know, Jesus was opposed and persecuted by several religious groups and sections of the Jewish nation during his lifetime here on earth. The priests waylaid him, challenged him, questioned him relentlessly. They plotted against him. They plotted to kill him. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the lawyers, and even ordinary people mocked him, scorned him, shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Now, in the midst of all that kind of ferment, all kind of turmoil, in the midst of the persecution, the opposition, how wonderful to read that Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit. He rejoiced in the Spirit. You see, because of his own fellowship in prayer with God, and because of his own fellowship with those that he cares for and those that care for him. So prayer is the strength that we derive from fellowship with God as we trust and obey him and the joy of fellowship with others as we relate to them based on the love of God in us. Jesus showed us constantly what prayer is. Prayer is who you are. It's about your focus in life. It's about your individuality. It's about your personality. So don't try and copy someone else. You are the original you. You are the original you. So use your own originality in your relationship with God. Prayer is about who you are. Your focus, your desire, your anxieties, your worries, your motivations, you know, your ambitions. Prayer is who you are. So don't try and copy me and don't try and copy someone else. You develop your own relationship with God. Try and have a list of everybody that prayed in the Bible and you will see each one of them prayed differently. Each one of them prayed differently on the basis of who they are. But secondly, prayer is who God is to you. You know, your knowledge of God, your relationship with God, your experience of God. That's what prayer is. Again, it shows that my own prayer life will be far different from your own prayer life because my knowledge of God may be bigger or smaller than your knowledge of God. So, but God is saying this to each one of us. God wants us to grow in our relationship with him. As we grow in our relationship with God, our prayer life matures. God is always asking us, to come to a place of maturity, to come to the higher ground, you know, come to the higher ground. That is what God is constantly requesting of each one of us. Amen. And we say thirdly, you know, we say thirdly, prayer is what? Thirdly, prayer is about, it's about our relationship to others as well. You know, if you love people, if you love God, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, you will love people selflessly. Prayer is about that as well. It's about your relationship with others. So that's why Jesus was saying, if you don't forgive, and you go to God and you say, oh God, forgive me. He won't forgive you. Why? Because prayer is about your relationship with others. You know, if you are not kind to other people and you are saying to God, please be kind to me, God is saying, how does that square up? If you are not merciful, and you are saying to God, have mercy on me. God is saying, how will that square up? So prayer is also about your relationship with other people. It's about your relationship with other people. So put it this way. If you love God, then you love people selflessly. You are not emotionally attached to them, to drain them, you know, to, to make it their responsibility to care for you in your life and you have nothing to to benefit them. You are constantly hanging upon them and drawing from them and all that stuff. 
you are not thinking of yourself. How can I help daddy? How can I help general overseer? I need to pray for him. I need to love him. I need to do things for him as well. You know, that's the kind of relationship that God wants us to have as children of God. A two-way relationship. A relationship in which we are both assets to one another. Not that one is a deficit to the other person. You know, one is draining the other person. Not that one is a parasite on the other person. Not that one is a leech on the other person. No, we are united in our love and trying to benefit each other. Okay? God is good. So prayer is about you loving and caring for others as well. And they loving and caring for you. But number four, as we say, prayer is the joy of being in God. Of knowing that you are loved and cared for. That will determine the confidence you have in praying to God. You know, that will determine how confident you are that God will answer your prayers. Once you know that God loves and cares for you. You know, prayer is the joy of being loved and cared for by God. Is the joy of being loved and cared for by other people, by your wife, your husband, your general overseer, members of your church. You know, when you come to God from that position of God loves you and you love people and they love you, prayer is such a wonderful, wonderful experience. Prayer is joy. You know, prayer is not a burden. Prayer is not about shouting, 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 stamping your feet. You know, that's what people do. They think that's prayer. Prayer is not that, actually. Prayer is not that. Prayer is the joy of being in God. The joy of being loved and cared for by God. And the love and care that we receive from people, both those who are close to us and those that we hardly know. And uh, finally, the fifth point that we raise, prayer is the strength that we derive from fellowship with God as we trust and obey Him and the joy of fellowship with others as we relate to them based on our love in God for them. So put it this way, when someone asks you what is prayer, please don't reply in the traditional way. For so many people believe that prayer is simply about asking God for the things that they need or desire. That that's prayer. That is not prayer. That is not prayer. That kind of attitude reflects a very poor understanding of what prayer is. And you can see across many nations, people will be saying, they are praying, they are praying, they are fasting, they are praying. 40 days, 40 years, nothing is happening because they don't understand the five cardinal points that I've mentioned today in relation to defining what prayer is. Those five cardinal points are so important. If, you, if we get those five cardinal points right, guess what? Our prayers will be powerful. Our prayers will be passionate. When we are talking about powerful prayers, we are not talking about shouting prayers. We are not talking about repetitive prayers. We are not talking about all the, you know, all the energetic, dynamic Swinging around, stamping our feet, all that stuff. Ah, God, 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 Jesus, Jesus. That's not prayer. That's not prayer. Nothing happens with that kind of prayer, actually. It's a, it's a waste of time. But those five cardinal points that we looked at today, when we put them together, our prayers will be powerful and passionate because they are coming from the perspective of God. Prayer isn't about asking God for the things that we need or desire. Prayer is how we live our life before God. So before you pray, think about it. Prayer is actually how you live your life before God. That's what Jesus showed us. It's how he lived his life before God that matters. So before he prays, his life is already a prayerful life. Because of the way he lives his life before God. He doesn't need to shout. He doesn't need to make so many prayers. Voluminous prayers. No. Because of his life before God. Prayer is how we live our life before God. Focus on that. 
your prayer will then be powerful and passionate. Prayer is fundamentally about our relationship with God and our relationship with people from every walks of life. So prayer is not just about opening my mouth and saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. All of that is just sweating for nothing. Sweating for nothing. Prayer is fundamentally about our relationship with God and our relationship with people from every aspect of life, from all walks of life. How do you relate? Do you love them? Do you care for people? Or are you judgmental? Are you saying to people on the basis of your self-righteousness, are you condemning them to hell? Are you... Are you are you the kind of person that goes about, you know, being jealous, being envious, backstabbing, you know, and then you do night vigil, and then you do fasting? You are wasting your time, basically, because that is not prayer. That is not prayer. Prayer is fundamentally about our relationship with God and our relationship with people from every walks of life. Prayer is therefore a way of being, a way of living. Prayer is a lifestyle. What is your lifestyle like? Because that's your prayer. Before you open your mouth, your lifestyle is already telling God something. <laughs> you don't even need to open your mouth. Your lifestyle, the kind of life that you are leading, is already telling God, speaking to God. It's already speaking to God. You don't even need to say anything to God. Your lifestyle is speaking to God already. It's communicating something to God. Prayer is therefore a way of being and a way of relating. Can you see the fundamental perspective of God when it comes to prayer? Can you see why some people pray and pray? There is no answer. And why some nations pray and pray? There is no answer. Can you see the reason? And can you see the reason why some nations don't even pray and things are going well for them? Because their lifestyle is already praying for them. Do you get what I'm saying? When you come to places like uh, the UK or other advanced nations, what you will say is, oh, look at all these people. They're not going to church. Oh, look at them. They, they, they support gay people. They support lesbians. They support this. That the Bible doesn't say we should support. Fine. Go on being judgmental. But look at their country. Look at the governance. Look at the democracy. Look at how they look after their own citizens. That is already speaking to God on their behalf. That's the point I'm making. Prayer is a way of being and relating to people. Your life is already speaking to God. Before I open my mouth, my life is already speaking to God. Prayers are already going from me to God by my lifestyle. It's not me going on the mountain. It's not me going on the, into the wilderness. It's not me going into some solitary place. No, 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 no. Forget all of that. My life now is already speaking to God. Volumes. It's speaking volumes to God before I even open my mouth. So God in his mercy is already relating to me, anticipating my needs and blessing me. Even before I pray, that's why he says, before you pray, I will answer. Before you call, I will be there for you, Kemi. Why? Prayer is a way of being and relating to God and to other people. Hallelujah. It's a way of being and a way of relating. Prayer is a way of being in this moment. Amen. When we are talking of your lifestyle, your lifestyle this moment, this very moment, not tomorrow, not the one yesterday. Where are you now? What are you doing now? You know, the past is past and the future is unknown. Prayer is about this very moment of your life. What are you doing right now? What is your life about now? What is your focus in life now? What is your nature now? What kind of person are you this very moment? Because that is what is speaking to God before you open your mouth. That's what is speaking to God. Prayer is about this very moment in your life. And you don't even know whether you'll have the next moment. Only God knows that. 
So you need to focus on this very moment and be the best person you can be. Love God exclusively. Love others selflessly. Amen. 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 Prayer is about this moment. Prayer is about this present time. Prayer is being open. Being open, being honest, being sincere about yourself rather than going about judging others and, and, and you know, behaving as if you are the holier and the, the greatest holy person. You know, the way some people preach or teach or the way they even relate to other people. Oh my goodness. There is no humility. You know, there is no humility. Prayer is about being honest. Prayer is about being sincere. Prayer is about being humble. Remember in Luke chapter 18, where Jesus spoke about the Pharisee that went to the temple to pray and the tax collector that went to pray and the Pharisee was, you know, saying, and I thank you, O oh God. I'm not like that sinner. I pay my tithes. I give donations. I worship you five times a day. I do great works. He was praying to himself and a lot of people. We call that kind of instance of prayers vanity prayers. A lot of people are involved in vanity prayers. They may not be saying it the way the Pharisee said it, but guess what? When somebody says, oh God, I thank you that you woke me up today. Many people are already dead, but I thank you you woke me up. That's not that's vanity prayer. Just thank God he woke you up. What if it's your, it was your father that died during the night? Would you say, oh God, I thank you you woke me up. I'm glad my father died. No, you don't do that. That's not, that's not a thanksgiving prayer. You never heard anyone of God pray that kind of prayer in scripture. It comes from a heart that is vain and possibly a heart that is wicked. Okay? What we are saying is this. Prayer is about who you are, whether you love God and you love people selflessly. You know, look at that Pharisee in Luke chapter 18. He was praying to himself. He did not know that he was praying to himself. He was holier than thou. He was judgmental. He felt so self-righteous, so self-vindicated. And then the tax collector did not even move as near as the altar, stood far back and said, Oh God, forgive me, I'm a sinner. Oh God, forgive me, I'm a sinner. And the Bible says the man went home justified. So what we are saying is this. Prayer is about you being honest, being sincere, being humble. Being honest, being sincere, being humble. Hallelujah. Prayer is a way of relating to God. A way of relating to God. A way of learning to be ourselves. Learning to improve on ourselves. Prayer is a focus on ourselves. Firstly, you. What are you doing with your love for God? With your love for others? Forget about other people. Concentrate on yourself. Jesus says, take out the big, big, you know, beams in your eyes. And then it will allow you to see the small specks in other people's eyes. What Jesus is saying is this. Listen, your life matters. Your life before God matters. Don't worry about other people. Let your life be the preaching. Let your life be the teaching. Let your life be the prayer. Before you open your mouth to preach or teach or to pray, let your life, the conduct of your life, the love that you have for God and the selfless love that you have for others, let it preach, let it pray, let it teach. Let it be the thing that God sees. And before you open your mouth, God says, I am here for you. Oh, God is good. I know time is going. You know that in this first installment, we are looking at this question, what is prayer? Prayer is a way of relating to God. It's a way of relating to ourselves and to those around us. That is prayer. Work on it that way and you'll have a powerful and passionate prayer life. For those of us who believe in the atoning death of Jesus, for those of us who believe in the perfect sacrifice that Jesus offered, through his death on the cross, in reconciling us with God, so that God has forgiven us our trespasses, because we've come to God through Christ Jesus. To ask for forgiveness of sins, God has forgiven us. Not only that, God has brought us into a relationship with himself. Not only that, 
God does not reformulate this life. No, no, no. God cancels that life. God creates a new person. So I'm a new creation. I'm not a chapter in, an, in, a, in, a, in a book. I'm a new book entirely that God has opened because he has received me in Christ Jesus. My heart is now turned in love towards God and towards other people. The Bible is not a book of rules, a book of do's and don'ts. The Bible is God's love letter to me. The Bible is not burdensome for me now. God in his mercy is in my heart and I am in the heart of God. I'm learning more and more to love him and to love others, to show kindness, to show humanity, to show helpfulness, to be generous, to be supportive, to think of others first before I even think of myself. Hallelujah. I can't do that in my own way, but guess what? The Holy Spirit of God, when you read Romans chapter 5, he says, God in his mercy has poured his Holy Spirit upon us and therefore he has put his love in our heart. It's the Holy Spirit that does it. That is prayer. That's why the Bible says the Holy Spirit groans in you and prays for you. So I don't go to a place of prayer on my own now. Guess what? I go because of the perfect work of Jesus Christ. There is blood on the altar. Perfect sacrifice. I don't bring my own blood. I don't bring my own good works. I don't bring anything of myself. I just bring my faith in the perfect work of Jesus Christ. And guess what? Because of the work of God in that perfect sacrifice, God has deposited himself in me through his Holy Spirit. So I go there with the Holy Spirit of God. All my life is a prayer to God. Every day, every moment is a prayer to God. So when I open my mouth, my prayer becomes even more powerful, more passionate. Hallelujah. That is prayer. Your life, the way you are leading your life, that is prayer. It's not your night vigil. It's not your fasting. It's not your going to church. It's not whatever. How are you leading your life? Because that is prayer. That is prayer. So for those of us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, our prayer is powerful and passionate because our prayer is exclusively about establishing a relationship with God through Jesus. Our prayer is exclusively about developing that relationship. Our prayer is exclusively about growing and maturing in that relationship built on faith and trust in God. God knows the desires of our heart long before we even think to ask. Therefore, prayer is not merely our pipeline to God's blessings. Instead, prayer is our bloodline to God. That precious bloodline established by the perfect sacrifice of God's only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Prayer is not mere communication with God. Prayer is not a communication device. Prayer is not a mobile phone call to God. No, prayer is not that. Prayer is not a pipeline. Prayer is not a phone line. Prayer is our umbilical cord to God. When a baby is in the womb, the baby is attached to the mother through the umbilical cord. Guess what? That is what prayer is to us. Prayer is our umbilical cord to God. Prayer is not a phone device. Prayer is not me saying, Hello God, are you there? Can you send me my dinner? Can you send me my breakfast? Can you send me school fees for my children? Can you send me a new tie? Can you give me a new car? That is not prayer. That is not prayer. Prayer is my life before God. Prayer is me knowing how God cares and loves for me and has brought me home to himself. Prayer is my life now. Prayer is your life now. Prayer is not communication with God. Prayer is being one with God in trust, in obedience, in love, in faith, and in oneness. Prayer is being one with God. It's oneness with God in trust, in obedience, in love, in faith, and in oneness. Amen. You can see why by the grace of God, my own prayer is powerful and passionate. And I can genuinely say to you, by the grace of God, 
uh, I have seen, <laughs> I've seen great, great acts of God. Amen. I won't say more than that. I'm grateful to God for teaching me and leading me and for pouring himself to him into me by his Holy Spirit. And he does that for everybody. He doesn't do it because I'm the general overseer. The functioning of the office is attended by the unction for the office. Okay? The functioning of the office of the general overseer is accompanied by the anointing of God for that office. So I'm grateful to God that in that way, yes, I might have something a little bit extra to what you have because in the mercy of God, he has appointed me to lead his people. And so there will be many times when God will say, it is the person that I have appointed to lead my people that needs to pray for you. And then I will answer. And you see that in many instances in scripture. Abraham was required to pray for Abimelech. Okay, Moses prayed for the children of Israel. Jesus prayed for all of us. Peter was asked to come and pray so that Dorcas could be resurrected from the dead. It's not that God loves other people less. It's that the unction for the function of God in their life has to be utilized. Okay? Hallelujah. I don't want you to feel that my prayer life is better than yours. No. I'm just a human being like you. And I'm encouraging you. Develop your own relationship with God. Understand what prayer is. And your prayer life will be powerful and passionate. Prayer is not your telephone line to God. Prayer is your umbilical cord to God. Without it, you have no nourishment, no air to breathe, and no life. Let's finish. By the grace of God, prayer is not an obligation. Prayer is who you are. <laughs> prayer is not a duty. Prayer is not a burden. Prayer is who you are. Prayer is your everyday life. Now you know you can enjoy your prayer life now, can't you? You don't have to say, I must pray every Wednesday. I must fast every Friday. I must go to the wilderness. I must uh, go and see prophet so and so. All of those aspects simply reveal that people don't know what prayer is. But guess what? Now you know what prayer is. Hallelujah. God is good. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and bless you for teaching us what prayer is. And we embrace everything that you've taught us. We ask you, O oh God, that you make effective in our life everything that you've taught us today, that our prayer life will be powerful and passionate and will be according to the perspective of God. Thank you for teaching us what prayer is, O oh God. Take all the glory, all the praise, and all the adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 It is done. It is done. Uh, I will try and sing a song. I'll borrow somebody from YouTube to sing a song. So bear with me. I'll be back with you shortly. Welcome back. Let's listen to this uh, wonderful hymn uh, from a friend on YouTube. Okay. Trouble anywhere, trouble anywhere. We 
Praise God for that. God is just so good. Okay, till we meet again on the next installment on prayer. Okay? God bless you. Make his face shine upon you and grant you his peace. Thank you for watching this broadcast and for listening. To God be the glory. Bye for now. Bye.